because I appreciate Chris Hedges' analysis and insight so much, I'm just going to read this uh, article that he posted, or that was posted earlier today, titled the, Collect the Collective Suicide of the Liberal Class. No one can or should take them seriously. They stand for nothing. They fight for nothing. And then I'll just give a little bit of commentary uh, throughout. Princeton, New Jersey, that is where Mr. Hedges lives. Liberals who express dismay or more bizarrely a fevered hope about the corporatists and imperialists selected to fill the positions in the Biden admin are court jesters of our political burlesque. They long ago sold their soul and abandoned their most basic principles to line up behind a bankrupt Democratic Party preach. They chant with every election cycle the mantra of the least worst and sit placidly on the sidelines as Bill Clinton or a Barack Obama and the Democratic Party leadership betray every issue they claim to support 100%. The only thing that mattered to liberals in the presidential race once again was removing a Republican, this time Donald Trump, from office. This the liberals achieved, but their Faustian bargain in election after election has shredded their credibility they are ridiculed not only among right-wing Trump supporters, but by the hierarchy of the Democratic Party that has been captured by corporate power. I would say not even the hierarchy, the whole fucking party. <laughs> no one can or should take liberals seriously. I agree. So fucking Bradley Whitford, Whitford the, the actor, the blue check liberal on, on Twitter was saying Jesus was a radical liberal. No, he fucking wasn't. Jesus was a socialist. Shut the fuck up, Bradley. Um, no one can or should take liberals seriously. They stand for nothing. They fight for nothing. The cost is too onerous. And so liberals do what they always do. Chatter endlessly about political and moral positions. They refuse to make any sacrifices to achieve. I love it. God damn, he just has such a scathing analysis that gets to the heart of of all these issues. He Chris Hedges is a treasure. I I love and cherish this person. Liberals largely compromise the PMC, yep, professional managerial class that dutifully recycles and shops for organic produce and is concentrated on the two coasts. East Coast, West Coast, and have profited from the ravages of neoliberalism. They seek to endow it with a patina of civility. Again, that's 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 fucking Biden in a nutshell, putting that nice nice patina, that nice nice coat back on the U.S. empire while still doing all the depraved and fucked up shit that was been doing that has been done under Trump, Obama, Bush, Clinton. And we keep going back and back. But the routine and public humiliation has ominous consequences. It only exposes the liberal class as hollow and empty. It discredits the liberal democratic values they claim to uphold. Again, just, just think about this election cycle. Obama and the other democratic leaks, elites, I should say, working behind the scenes to do everything they can to make sure Bernie Sanders wasn't the nominee and doing everything they could to prop up Joe Biden, this this horrible corporatist, racist, warmonger at all costs. Um, let's see. Liberals should have abandoned the Democratic Party when Bill Clinton and political hacks such as Biden transformed the Democratic Party into the Republican Party. Again, we have two two right wing parties in the U.S. None of them obviously serves the working class, and launched a war on traditional liberal values and left wing populism. They should have. Defected by the millions to support Ralph Nader and the Green Party candidates. This defection, as Nader understood, was the only tactic that could force exactly. You're not you're not gonna get the fucking Democratic Party to change by continuing to undyingly support them no matter how fucking horrible and regressive they are, but that's what a lot of people keep doing. It's it's fucking ridiculous. How how do you expect change to happen? When you're doing the same thing over and over and again, you're going to get the same fucking results. <clears throat> it was the only tactic that could force the Democrats to adopt parts of the liberal and left-wing agenda and save us from the slow-motion corporate coup d'etat. I, lo I love when he says that. Fear is the real force behind political change. Again, yes, yes, yes. 
not oily promises of mutual goodwill. Short of this pressure, this fear, especially with labor unions destroyed, there's no hope. Yeah, lab labor movement, the labor unions in the U.S. have been completely, completely and utterly gutted. Union membership, especially in the private sector, is at a really low number in private sector in the public sector as well. And that's again, that's Boots Riley makes this point, and I totally agree. The only way we're going to be, be the only way we're going to be able to create any substantive change that's going to last in the U.S. is by some type of general strike where we hurt capitalism. The only way, the only thing. That affects it and the owner oligarch class through our labor power by by fucking fucking the economy up creating my massive financial losses until our our needs are met that's the only thing that's that's going to help i think and obviously the decimation of you know labor movements <laughs> the labor unions and the labor movement does not help that um Short of this pressure, the, this fear, especially, if, yeah, there is no hope. Now we will reap the consequences of liberal classes, moral and political cowardice. And I don't know if he'll touch on this in this article, but Hedges has made the point in the past that Biden's not going to obviously be fighting for any of these massive substantive changes that we desperately need in the U.S. And person that's going to come after biden the next trump or maybe it's trump again is going to be a more effective fascist the democratic party elites revel in taunting liberals uh taunting liberals as well as a left-wing populist who preach class warfare in support of bernie sanders how are we supposed to interpret the appointment of anthony blinken one of the architects of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan supported the apartheid state of Israel as Secretary of State, or John Kerry, who championed yep, the massive expansion of domestic oil and gas production, largely through fracking. Thought, you know, Biden said, we're going to listen to the scientists. The scientists say, no fracking. No fracking. Biden said, nope, I ain't, I ain't banning that shit. Fuck them. Fuck them. According to Barack Obama's memoir, worked doggedly to convince those concerned about the climate crisis to, quote, offer up concessions on subsidies for the nuclear power industry and the opening of additional U.S. coastlines to offshore oil drilling. That's fucking John Kerry. He ran for fucking president in 2004. <sighs> Just so many fucking shit, shitty people, man. As the new climate policies are, or Brian Deese, the executive who is in charge of climate portfolio at Black. <laughs> oh my God, at BlackRock. Yeah, Biden. I, just like how Obama let Citigroup pick his fucking cabinet. I mean, come on. Which invests heavily in fossil fuels, including coal, who served as a former Obama econ advisor who advocated austerity measures again there's going to be a shit ton of people in biden's cabinet we haven't seen any and we shouldn't expect any type of you know progressive or leftist or populist to be appointed to to biden's cabinet that's the whole reason they propped him up they know he ain't gonna do fucking shit for the working class and they love that um and again, I bet a lot of, in Biden's administration are going to be advocating austerity when we don't need that at all. We need a massive expansion of these programs of social uplift to do to deal with all the massive suffering that has been created during this pandemic. Yes, and then we have Nir Tandon here, as Hedges points out, for director of the Office of Management and Budget, who has advocated before, along with Joe Biden, for cutting fucking Social Security. <sighs> who was president of the Center for American Progress, raised millions in dark money from Silicon Valley and Wall Street while relentlessly ridiculing Bernie Sanders and his supporters on cable news and social media and opposed a plank in the Democratic platform calling for bombing Iran, who, who proposed, I should say. The Biden Amman resembles the ineffectual German government formed by Franz von Papen in 1932 that sought to create the ancient regime, a utopian conservatism that ensured Germany's drift into fascism. Biden's bereft 
like von Papen of new ideas and per completely bereft of those. They, they, there's bereavement all over the fucking place with regards to that. Will eventually be forced to employ the brutal tools as Biden, as senator, was so prominent in creating to maintain social control. Yep, wholesale surveillance, corporate, a corp, a corrupt judicial system, the world's largest prison system. And yet the U.S. is the land of the free. There's got to be some cognitive dissonance going on for that to work. Huh? And police that have been transformed into the into lethal paramilitary units of internal occupation. Those that resist as social unrest mounts will be attacked as agents of a foreign power and censored as many already are being censored, including through alg algorithms and deplatforming on social media. The most ardent and successful dissidents, such as Julian Assange, will be criminalized. The shock troops of the state, already ideologically bonded with the neo-fascists on the right, will hunt down and wipe out an enfeebled and often phantom left. As we saw in the chilling state assassination by U.S. Marshals, yep, like I did a video about this a couple months ago, the anti-fascist act, we gotta stop saying Antifa. Antifa is anti-fascist. Anti-fascist activist Michael Reinel, who was unarmed and standing outside an apartment complex in Lacey, Washington, not more than a couple hours south from where I live, in September when he was shot multiple times. I witnessed this kind of routine state terror during the war in El Salvador. Reinhold allegedly killed Aaron Danielson, a member of the far-right group Patriot Perry, during a pro-Trump rally in Portland, Oregon. It was, again, it was just a, an extrajudicial assassin, assassination ordered by Trump and carried out by these fucking federal fascist police. Compare the gunning down of Reinhold by federal agents... To the cot, yes, to the coddling of Kyle Rittenhouse, the 17 year old accused, the 17 year old white supremacist, it should say, accused of killing two protesters and injuring a third on August 25th in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Police officers, moments before the shooting, yep, are seen giving him fucking water bottles and thanking him um, and other armed right wing militia members for coming to the city and handing them. Again, there's this white supremacist, Proud Boys, Patriot Prayer, and police. They're like this. They're, they're buddies. They're buddies. They're, they're intertwined. They're intertwined. It's a circle. Um, Rittenhouse has also seen a video in a video um, in a, with his hands up after shooting. After the shooting spree, his protesters yell that he had shot several people. Police nevertheless allow him to leave. Of course they would. They, they support that shit again. Rittenhouse is killing have been defended by the right, including Trump Rittenhouse, who has received hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations for legal fees, has been released on $2 million bill. Compare that to Khalif Browder, who was accused of stealing a backpack, which he didn't. He was locked up in fucking Rikers Island. Black person. Well, two types of justice systems here in the U.S., especially if you have money and especially if you're white. We stand on the cusp of a frightening authoritarianism, social unrest, giving a continuation of neoliberalism, the climate crisis, the siphoning off of diminish, diminishing resources to the bloated war machine. Congress didn't have any problems passing the 170 or 740 billion military budget that goes to death and destruction while people have gotten one means tested $1,200 check if they qualified during this whole fucking pandemic. Always find money for war. Political stagnation and the failure to contain the pandemic and its economic fallout is almost certain. Absent a left-wing populism, a disenfranchised working class will line up as it did with Trump behind its counterfeit right-wing populism. Again, that's right-wing populism is just giving people another outlet to blame not getting into the actual class struggle, which is the real problem, and that's capitalism. Instead, you know, like Trump has done, direct it towards the other, whether it be, you know, immigrants or, you know, whatever. The liberal elites will, if history is any guide, justify state repression as a response to social chaos. Again, like Biden said, just the shoot him in leg. That's his response to... Police getting out of control. The, sh the shoot them in the leg. Shoot them in the leg. And then name a law and order. Joe Biden's a law and order candidate, you know. 
That they too are in the Christian right and the corporate state's long list of groups to be neutralized would become evident to them when it's too late. It was Frederick Ebert and the Social Democratic Democratic Party of Germany siding with the conservatives and nationalists that created Free Corps. Private military groups composed of demobilized soldiers and malcontents. The Free Corps ruthlessly crushed left-wing uprisings in Berlin, Bremen, Brunswick, Hamburg, Hall, Leipzig, Silesia, Thuringia, and the Ruhr. And the Freikorps Corps was not gunning down left-wing populists in the streets and carrying out hundreds of political assassinations, including the murder of Walter Rathau, the foreign minister. It was terrorizing civilians, looting, and pillaging. The Freikorps Corps became the antecedent of the Nazi brown shirts led by Ernst Röhm, a former Freikorps Corps commander. All the pieces are in place for our own descent into what I suspect will be a militarized, Christ- Christianized fascism. Political dysfunction, a bankrupt and dis- discredited liberal class, totally massive and growing social inequality. <sighs> massively, massively unequal society that the U.S. is. It's, it's, it's disgusting. A grotesquely rich and tone-deaf oligarch elite, the fragmentation of the public into warring tribes, widespread food insecurity and hunger. All these things are happening, like he points out. Chronic unemployment, underemployment, unemployment, misery all exacerbated by the failure of the state to cope with the crisis of the pandemic, combined with the rot of civil and political life to create a familiar cocktail leading to authoritarianism and fascism. And, you know, that cocktail that Hedges references there has all those ingredients in place right now, and they're just being added and and combined and and well mixed together, and, and the strength is increasing. Trump and the Republican Party, along with the shrill incendiary voices on the right on right wing media, play the role the anti Semitic parties played in Europe during the late nineteenth and early twentieth century. The infusion of anti Semitism into the political debate in Europe destroyed the political decorum and civility that is vital to maintaining a democracy. Excuse me. Racist tropes and hate speech, as in Weimar Germany, now poison our political discourse, ridicule and Cruel taunts are hold back and forth. Lies are interchangeable with fact. Those who oppose us are demonized as human embodiments of evil. The poisonous discourse is not is only going to get worse, especially with millions of Trump supporters convinced the election was rigged and stolen. Yeah, MAGA on the brain. <laughs> the German Social Democrat Kurt Schumacher in the in the 1930s said that fascism, quote, is a constant appeal to the inner swine in human beings and succeeded by, quote, mobilizing human stupidity. This mobilized stupidity accompanied by what Reiner Maria Rilke called, quote, the evil effluvium from the human swamp is being amplified and intensified in in the siloed media chamber of the right. This hate-filled rhetoric eschews reality to cater to the desperate desire for emotional catharsis. Yes, totally, totally. People are just looking for whatever they can to glom on to to direct their anger their hatred their sorrow their misery to and again the right wing isn't you know directing it towards towards the capitalist to the owner oligarch class to this capitalist system that feeds on exploitation of people and 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 the environment and you know um what was I going to say, uh, exponential growth on a finite planet, etc. Again, they're, they're just going to find who, whatever scapegoat they think their base will, will eat up. And, you know, if, if in the Democrat, the liberal, liberal class isn't, you know, offering a, a class analysis, obviously, and they see, you know, most people see through how hollow their analysis is, and Biden obviously isn't offering that all he is saying yeah let's just let's just return to normal the republicans will get in line thing things will be better things will be better i'm not going to actually address any of the issues that allowed trump to rise to power because trump is a symptom not the disease completely off the table again that's why they propped him up this hateful rhetoric um excuse reality to cater to the desperate desire for emotional catharsis for new glory make America great again, and prosperity and for acts of savage vengeance 
against the phantom enemies blamed for our national debacle. The constant barrage of vitriol and fabulous conspiracy theories will, I fear, embolden extremists to carry out political murder, not only of mainstream Democrats, Republicans, uh, mainstream Democrats, Republicans, Trump has accused of betrayal such as Georgia, Governor Brian Kemp, and those targeted as part of the deep state, but also those at media outlets such as CNN or the New York Times that serve as propaganda arms for the Democratic Party, which they definitely do. Once the Pandora's box of violence and open is almost impossible to close, martyrs on one side of the divide demand martyrs on the other side. Violence becomes the primary form of communication. I mean, and I feel like it's just our chickens coming home to roost. Like, look at U.S. fucking foreign policy. Bomb. Destroy. Torture. People all over the world. What do we think was... That shit's just being... That shit's just going to come back to bite us. Blow back, you know? Not to mention the massive amount of money that is spent on that when it could be desperately used for a program to social uplift right here in the United States. I mean, and as Sebastian Hafner wrote, quote, once the violence and readiness to kill that lies beneath the surface of human nature has been awakened and turned against other humans and even made into a duty, it is simply, it is a simple matter to change the tar target. This I suspect is what is coming. The blame lies not only with the goons and racists on the right, the corporatists who pillage the country and the corrupt ruling elite that does their bidding, but a feckless liberal class that found standing up for its beliefs too costly. The liberals will pay for their timidity and cowardice, but so will we. <sighs> Damn. And the artwork was by uh, Mr. Fish who I believe uh, is the cartoonist who does pretty much all of um, Hedge's artwork for his pieces, which is Biden-Harris, the little Kool-Aid person there. But goddamn, does, Hedges just does such an excellent job just getting to the root of the problem and all the horrible things that come by having such a feckless liberal class a democratic party that's completely in bought and paid for by special interests republican party that's you know christianized not dealing with reality um but they're able to you know espouse this this populist message trump you know make america great again i'll bring your jobs back it was hillary and you know and bill clinton who supported nafta i'm not going to do that and again trump Obviously, he's a fake populist, and he didn't even follow through with any of that rhetoric. Rhetoric, it was just rhetoric. But at least he was giving something people to to hold on to. And again, all Biden is offering is he is not Trump. Well, not again addressing any of the symptoms, any of the reasons that Trump, you know, was able to to become president. I mean, <sighs> crazy, scary times that we live in and as Hedges points out we're going to keep keep going down this this deep dark rabbit hole until we get some type of class solidarity or I don't know what else it will take but again I think the only thing that's going to create any type of substantive change because our political system is so corrupt is some type of general strike where we get at the heart of capitalism and make it hurt in the oligarchs pocketbooks that's my thoughts what are yours share them down below peace much love stay safe